This unit's about what is theater. Um, it's entitled What is Theater? And I thought we'd take a little time to go over some of the origins of theater um, as a way of for introducing ourselves to what we see as the contemporary theater today. The theater began in ritual form, as we understand it, um, primarily as an, a way of expressing uh, storytelling. Uh, these events could have taken place um, either uh, you could consider a theatrical event to be just a group of people around a fire telling stories and to making the leap from simply recounting something in the first person to beginning to dramatize something between two people. It's a very natural impulse. Organized theater, um, as we understand it, began with the Greeks. Um, this again began as a ritual in something that we call the Dithyram which was a uh, dance chant festival celebrating the life of the god Dionysus. This was a festival of wine and fertility and was usually a, such a, a major event that literally all of the citizens of Athens attended this uh, series of performances. It was a, sort of a theater festival in a classic sense. Now, uh, this dancing and chanting, um, something that might have been a little uh, not unlike uh, going to say a, a big concert where everybody knew all the lyrics to the music. And there was a lot of drinking and again it was focused on on wine and fertility and, and stirring the passions of the people in the community because obviously it was essential uh, for the life of any community, particularly one uh, where people suffered a great deal in terms of disease and loss of people who died in wars, people died in childbirth, so keeping the population going and keeping people's enthusiasm to have more children was certainly a big part of uh, community life. So Dionysus, the god of wine and fertility, uh, was one of many gods in the polythe polytheistic uh, culture of ancient Greece. Um, Dionysus was uh, essentially the god of theater in the sense that uh, this festival of Dionysus then became the focus of these theater competitions in which the great playwrights of the golden age of Greece competed, uh, Aeschylus, Euripides, um, etc., Sophocles. So, from that beginning, which was really the first organized um, theater, professional theater as we understand it, um, that transition was from a ritualistic um, event to something that became more of a spectator's event, particularly as people began to visit Athens, trading partners, people that came into the city from other places, the uh, event was a bit toned down and became more of a almost a tourist kind of attraction in some ways. Um, so this event became more professionalized. Uh, a producer, an archon, uh, a, prime, a prominent citizen was charged with producing the event and people were hired to play parts. The first actors, Thespis being to our knowledge the first person who stepped out of the chorus and spoke lines directly to an audience. So those performances were basically broken down into something like a chorus, which wouldn't be unlike a, a choir in a church, only focused more on chanting uh, than on singing, although singing was evolved as well. Um, there was a great deal of music in the festival and in the performances. So a dialogue then was created between the uh, individual thespis or the individual actor and the chorus who would then ask questions of this person, why are you doing this, why are you doing that, etc. And that helped evolve the story. As other actors were added, then individual scenes were created within this show. Um, so without going too much further into um, the particulars of ancient Greece, as uh, theater began to evolve over the centuries, um, it became more of a professional endeavor. Um, 
certainly by the time we, we reach uh, the Renaissance, and particularly the English Renaissance and the Spanish Renaissance, we see um, troops of players whose entire life work is dedicated to creating theater. And among these people are notable um, parts of theater history, uh, certainly William Shakespeare, Ben Johnson, uh, uh, etc. So, um, as this uh, theater began to develop, professionalize, become more of a full-time occupation, um, the craft work within the theater became more and more particular. And also there was a gradual uh, and, and sort of steady drive away from poetic and to a more realistic theater, ultimately leading to the kind of realism and naturalism that we see on stage today, although there's still uh, a lot of other kinds of theater that you would see. Um, uh, an example of this would be uh, immersion theater like Sweet No More, the production that's in New York right now, or um, Blue Man Group, which is certainly theater, theatrical, uh, not exactly a naturalistic uh, story, in other words, and not a slice of life, not TV sort of naturalism. And in fact, TV and film uh, owe their origins and certainly acting style, and many of the writers and many of the performers uh, got their start in theater uh, and, and began to work in film, and as film developed, and the film broadcast media developed over the years, um, the exchange uh, continued. So now we come to a time uh, in which theater is a very diverse place indeed. Uh, there is commercial theater, Broadway theater, the theater that you would see uh, in New York or at touring houses, large musicals in big cities, etc. Um, there is uh, regional theater and non-for-profit theater which is um, slightly more uh, directed towards artistic goals, <clears throat> less profit-driven, uh, not that, that uh, big musicals or um, big theater performances that are tours are not uh, high art, they certainly are, um, but the goal of the production in nonprofit theater is more uh, to realize the play and less about realizing a profit. These um, regional theaters, as we, as we call them, uh, are prolific all over the United States. Over 1,200 professional regional nonprofit theaters exist in the United States, and they serve an audience uh, that is somewhat larger than the uh, live audience for professional football. Um, so theater is a going concern. It is uh, successful. Uh, many, many people are exposed to it, and many of you have probably already uh, seen professional theater or certainly seen college theater or community theater uh, and uh, have an understanding of theater based on that. I thought I'd talk a little bit about how we make theater today and the kind of artistic um, people that are involved in the process of creating theater, what their positions are, what their jobs are, and give you a, sort of a sense of, of the kind of team that comes together to produce theater. Now I'm going to talk to you about um, particularly uh, what we consider nonprofit theater, off-Broadway, uh, regional theater, professional theater, but uh, not a full commercial production that would produce something like a Broadway musical. Something, a group of people that would come together, a group of professionals, to produce a play uh, in contemporary, in the contemporary theater. So at the sort of top of this pyramid, artistically and organizationally, in a theater, we have a, a person called an artistic director. Uh, this man or woman is in charge of the vision of the theater itself. In other words, if we're talking about the Huntington uh, Theater in Boston, for example, uh, a theater of terrific reputation, um, the artistic director of the Huntington is in charge of choosing the season, 
they're in charge of hiring um, the principal staff people in the theater. Uh, they choose the directors who will direct the plays if they themselves don't direct the play. Um, and all of the programs that are uh, a part of the theater, the development programs, the audience outreach programs, uh, in the case of the Huntington, uh, the Playwright Fellowship, there's a, there's a playwright every year that's a, a, a playwriting fellow on the Huntington. Those decisions are all made by the artistic director and it, in fact the entire shape and form of the mission of the theater is guided by the artistic director. Um, the managing director of the theater is there to essentially organize the uh, daily operations of the theater. Uh, they will hire the people who are involved in uh, the staff positions, the stage management, um, uh, the uh, people that are running the different shops, the costume shop, the lighting shop, the scene shop, etc. And they deal with the administrative uh, duties of, of the theater. Um, when you get into the particular production, the artistic director has made a decision to produce a play. Uh, let's say it's, um, for example, uh, the play Brendan um, by Ronan Noon, which was produced at the Huntington several years ago. So the artistic director is going to make a decision, uh, first of all, that that play is going to be produced. Um, next the artistic director is going to decide who is going to direct that particular production. They may also um, consult with the director, but largely influence who is going to design the lighting, the sound, the costumes, the sets for that particular production. In the case of um, a theater like the Huntington, uh, you, you may have uh, theater artists, scenic artists, uh, design artists who regularly work for that particular theater. Uh, they may bring people in from the outside. Certainly the actors are brought in from the outside. There's not a resident company uh, at the Huntington Theater, meaning a group of actors that perform all of the plays at that particular theater. That, that largely is a thing of the past in the professional theater. <clears throat> with, with few examples. There, the Trinity Repertory in Providence still has a small company of actors that are there for all the different shows. Largely, actors are brought in uh, through an audition process. In, in the case of a regional theater like the Huntington, some of those actors may come in from Boston. Many of them will be cast from New York. So the artistic director uh, will depending on how hands-on they, they are, they might be involved in the casting process. They certainly will have final say on some of those things. The director, however, would make a decision as to uh, what the cast of that particular show would look like. Um, so after those artists are brought together, uh, the production is mounted, and we'll get into some of the details of how that comes together later. Um, but uh, the director then is, generally speaking, um, a, involved in that, partic that particular production and that particular production only, unless the director is also the artistic director of the theater. Once the production is over, the actors, the director, the designers, the, the entire staff that made that production largely goes their own separate ways unless they're employed full-time by the theater. talk for a little while about creating the show. All right? A show has been chosen, a play has been chosen to produce by the artistic director of a theater. And these are the steps in the contemporary theater that we go through to realize a production of that show. Um, a, let's, let's choose an example of a new play as opposed to a play like Tennessee Williams' Glass Menagerie. In that case, obviously, the playwright is deceased and we wouldn't be involved in communicating with the playwright uh, about script changes. Let's talk about a play that we're producing for the first time. This is the first major production of this play. So, the first step would be when the artistic director chooses the play, they're in communication with the playwright 
and they brought a director onto the project. The director puts forward their concept about this particular um, show, and a dialogue is then begun between the director and the playwright, and possibly also the artistic director. Now, somewhere in this, that two things have to happen. Uh, the management team has to be brought together, i.e. the stage management team. Uh, also, uh, the cast has to be brought on board, and the design team has to be brought on board. There's no particular order of how that happens. That design team may be in place with the theater already. Again, we might have some actors that are regulars or company members of that particular company. That's a possibility too, but let's say these, uh, this team is all going to be brought in from the outside, which is generally uh, the case when you're talking about, a, say, a major off-Broadway theater, non-profit still theater. Um, so there would be a notice put up, um, agents would be contacted, actors would be brought in to read for the individual parts. Uh, the design team, different designers would be interviewed, costume, scene designer, lighting designer. Uh, they would be presented with the script, they would throw ideas out, people would overlook, look over their portfolios, what they've done in the past, and the decision would be made to bring the team together. Uh, the actors could be cast a few months in advance, sometimes maybe only a few weeks in advance. Uh, the casting process might be one that evolves over a period of time with several people being brought into the cast a long time in advance and then the rest of the cast filled out a little later. Um, once the team has come together uh, and we begin the rehearsal process, generally the steps tend to be um, pretty much fall out in this order. Um, at the first reading of the play, the first time the cast, the director, generally the artistic director will be present or come in, uh, the designers, everyone will be generally in the same room together. The designers will then present uh, renderings, drawings of the costumes, uh, even a model of the set. Generally the lighting designer is there. Um, I may present um, key colors or uh, show some of the color choices that they have in mind. Um, and everyone is there present to hear the script being read. At that point uh, there may have been several rewrites of the script from the original moment that the script was chosen. And there may be several more uh, minor changes made between the time when that first reading is done and the show opens, depending on how much in development that particular script is. is. Um, so that's the moment when the whole team is really in one rehearsal space. Then from that moment we go into daily rehearsals. Um, in the professional theater at this stage of the game, uh, the rehearsal process will generally go anywhere from five to two and a half weeks in length. It is not uncommon to rehearse a show in the professional theater uh, and mount it uh, with just about two and a half weeks of preparation prior to the first technical rehearsal. Uh, although it, it certainly is much better and, and uh, a much more luxurious process when that extends to four or five weeks. Um, one, during this time, sets are being built, costumes are being built or pulled, uh, they're being tried on, uh, but by and large, you are not working in the theater where you're going to be doing the show. Generally, that stage is, there's either another show working on that stage, or uh, if the set's quite elaborate, the set may be being put into that at any one of the time during that process. Once you get into technical rehearsals, we have a, what we call a put-in day. That would be the day that the set is put into the set, uh, into the theater. Um, or it, that could also be a term used for the day that um, we as actors first um, get into the theater, uh, onto the set, and start to see where our dressing rooms are, where the costumes are going to be, etc., etc. That begins the process of tech rehearsal. And tech rehearsal generally um, falls out like this. Uh, we have a, what we call a dry tech, Q to Q. Sometimes the actors are not involved. That will be a time when the director and the designers basically go through the script from Q to Q to Q. Lighting Q, uh, movement of the set Q, etc. generally doesn't include um, costumes. Wet tech, 
uh, or costume parade. Costume parade is when the uh, the director will see all of the uh, costumes under the lights and on the set. Um, then wet tech, sometimes it's called wet tech, will be when we see uh, actors with costumes uh, under lights uh, going through the show, starting and stopping, uh, dealing with the technical issues of when people change, uh, where costumes are going to be backstage, etc and also the lighting and the movement of the set in coordination with all of those three elements, lighting, set, and costumes coordinating together. Now, leading up to the technical process, there have been uh, production meetings throughout the rehearsal process. So the design team has been getting together at the same time that the actors have been getting together and meeting and talking through all of the different logistical problems that go along with putting a show into a theater. Uh, and coordinating about design choices that they're making along the line. So the director's working with two very different groups of people. The cast, uh, where they're dealing pr primarily with the script, possibly the playwright as well, uh, is involved in that process. Uh, and then the design team, uh, where they're dealing with issues of, of design and logistics. All of this comes together during the technical process, which is generally anywhere from uh, three to um, five days in length. Uh, once that wet tech is over, there'll be a run through the show with the tech, uh, which may be a starting and stopping affair, or it may be a run depending on how well things go. Uh, then we have what we call FDR, or final dress rehearsal, which is really, uh, it, it, primarily the notion is that you would go through the show with all of the technical elements without stopping uh, to see how it goes. It's generally a fiasco. Um, the, uh, the next step of the process is what we call a preview. This is a time when an audience is brought in to see the show. Generally, it will be a paying audience, although there may be a, a, a no-paid preview for subscribers, etc. But the show is not technically open yet. And during this preview time, uh, sometimes reviewers are asked to come to the show um, so that the reviews can come out just before the show technically opens. Uh, oftentimes it's a time to just hammer out some things with the show in front of an audience before reviews are out and before the show is technically open. That really depends on uh, how much time you have and, and the luxury of, of uh, how long the process is overall. Um, and then the next step is opening night. Opening night, then the show is officially open. Uh, in theory, reviews come out very soon thereafter and then the show goes into its run. Okay. Now the run of the show uh, in a theater uh, like a regional theater like the Huntington or would be a scheduled run. In other words, it would be set to open on a particular day and set to close on a particular day. Very little flexibility. Uh, in New York, off-Broadway, uh, sometimes those ending dates are a little looser depending on if there's something else coming into the theater right away. Uh, in a Broadway show, it would generally be an open-ended run. Um, again, using the Punch Drunk uh, Sleep No More example, that is an open run. Uh, that show will continue to run as long as an audience is continually interested in going to it. So that is uh, the steps, those are the steps uh, that we use now in the contemporary theater for creating a show.